Hi, this is Joe, and welcome to this video. Uh, I have a uh, Harbor Freight uh, pump, electric pump, AC, that is not working. So we're going to uh, do some troubleshooting on this motor and see if we can figure out uh, what the problem is. First thing you want to do on any electric motor, whether it be AC or DC, is we want to check the brushes. Um, this is a brushed motor. It's an AC motor. Uh, it's similar to a DC motor uh, that's brushed. First thing we want to do is pull the brushes. The nice thing about Harbor Freight tools is in some cases when you buy a brushed motor they will provide you a set of replacement brushes that you can then change. But what we're going to do, always the first thing you want to do is pop the little covers and then get yourself a pair of needle nose pliers and then very gently take and pull out the brushes and what you'll notice here is there is a a spring the brushes are a bit used up if you notice you see that I could scratch that carbon off so these carbon brushes are very soft uh, they wear rather quickly so the first thing the reason why the first thing we want to do is check the uh, brushes is because they do wear quite quickly and this is a replaceable item so we wa always want to check that um, probably what I'm going to do is order another set um, of brushes for this motor and uh, we'll try it but for the purposes of this video we're going to take this motor completely apart and we're going to troubleshoot it to show everyone just how you would do that. So let's go ahead and pop the other brush out and it should be in a similar condition. And Okay now look at this. Let's look compare the differences in the brushes. Okay, this one is very very worn. I hope you can see that. And the other brushes is still quite long. So this actually could be our problem here. We may have lost contact with one of the brushes. Notice how this brush is still quite long and this brush is quite short. So my, my uh, original suspicions is that uh, one of the brushes uh, is worn to the point we're not making good contact with the commutator. So let's put these aside. Let's still go ahead and take this apart and we'll show you some other troubleshooting uh, steps that you can do to test the motor. So now let's go ahead and pull the uh, motor, separate the motor from the pump because we need to get it the back side to pull that armature out and then we'll do some troubleshooting on the armature. So uh, this is a 10 millimeter wrench. Most uh, Harbor Freight tools are made in the Far East. So that pretty much guarantees that all of your hardware is going to be metric. Okay, if you look, you'll notice there's a green wire, there is a black wire, and there is a white wire. Okay, the black is your hot, the white wire is your common or neutral wire. That's what routes the, the current after it goes through the motor back to your house plug. The green wire, of course, is your ground, and that protects you from uh, getting electrical shocks. You can also see in here that there is uh, some copper wire. The copper wire is wound and these are called your field windings. I was hoping we could pull those out so you can get out. Oh, maybe we can. There's some uh, screws right there. Uh, that's part of the stationary portion of the motor is your field windings. What happens is um, electrical electricity flows through those windings creates a magnetic field and that's what turns the armature 
We'll try to take that apart and get in there and take a peek at those windings. There's also a way to take a meter and measure if those windings are shorted out or uh, or actually have a broken uh, if there's broken wires in there it will affect the resistance of those windings and if there's too many of those uh, wires that are broke uh, the motor won't work because it's not generating enough magnetic field to turn this armature so let's set this off to the side for now and let's take a peek at the armature <clears throat> This is, looks rather good. It's not rusty. But if you look from a side view at the commutator, notice it's all black. And that is because your carbon brush material continually wears on, these, on this commutator. And oftentimes dirt and grit and gunk get on there and it makes a poor contact and you need some of the electricity going through this commutator here windings right here again all work part of the magnetic field that turns the armature so now let's go ahead and uh, let's get our meter and we're going to uh, do some testing but before we do some testing we want to clean up this commutator what I have here is a little bottle of acetone. I like to use acetone because it dries very quickly. It doesn't leave any residue and it's a really good cleaner. But be very careful not to get any acetone on your windings. Those windings are coated in a, uh, a shellac or type of a varnish that keeps the wires from shorting out. So you don't want to get anything and acetone is pretty pretty tough stuff. It will remove paint, it will remove varnish, etc. So try to just keep it on the commutator. Also, what we also want to do is there's a bearing here. This bearing rides on the motor housing. A lot of times after quite a few hours of operation, these bearings which are, are self-sealed and packed with lubrication, usually grease, over time will wear out, the bearings will feel rough, and then you, you have to press them off and put new bearings on. Now as I'm turning this, this bearing spins really smoothly. There's nothing that appears that it's a bad bearing. Sometimes if you turn it, it will, it will stop and it will stick and it will make grinding noises. And you want to always check your bearings because uh, after a while they will they will wear out. So this bearing seems to be fine. We're going to take some acetone and we're always going to apply it in this case to a paper towel. We don't want to get any of that acetone on those windings. And we're trying to remove all the excess carbon buildup from the brushes. The reason we're doing this is because the next step we're going to clean this commutator with some emery cloth and this is a fine emery cloth. This is a copper. Uh, there, as you notice there are wires that connect to every single little contact and if you notice there's little fine lines that separate each one of these is separate. They are soldered there. So we want to clean up this commutator. Now if you look very carefully at the commutator, sometimes you'll see a bevel on the pieces. And that means if there's a really strong bevel on there, that means that this commutator is wearing. So we want to make sure that there's not much of a bow in this because then if it's worn you won't get a good brush contact. See what happens, let's get this big brush here. This brush comes in and it rests on these contacts. If this is worn you won't get good contact. So what I'm going to do is take a little piece of emery cloth here and then we're going to very gently, not hard, very gently 
we're going to lightly sand the commutator and if you notice it's starting to brighten up. We're removing the oxidation, the crud, the dried carbon. Try to keep away from your contacts. We're just trying to clean this up here so that we get a really good contact, electrical contact from the brushes to the commutator here. As you can see, it's starting to brighten up here. So we are removing all the crud from this commutator here. We're going to end the first video here, and we'll pick up where we left off in the next video. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.